done with this uh, sort of basic linear algebra review, or, or uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, not a review, I guess. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is how vectors and matrices transform. And this is pretty easy. So, um, you know, if, if I have a coordinate system, say x and y, Let's say I rotate that, quarter system, that coordinate system through an angle. So I'm going to rotate the coordinate system so that I have this new coordinate system that we'll call x prime, y prime, and you know the angle through which we did the rotation. angle through which we do the rotation we'll call theta. So what I want to do is I just want to write down, I mean, x and x prime are both vectors, right? Uh, so I just want to write down how these vectors transform. Okay? How do I transform uh, x, and x, prime, x and y into x prime and y prime? Or Another way to say that might be, I want to write x prime and y prime in terms of x and y. Okay, And so if I do that, right, so if I say x prime equals, and I want to write it in terms of x and y, right? So this is just geometry. Can, can anybody tell me what it is? What does x prime equal in terms of x and y? Do what? Yeah, so uh, x cosine theta. So, you know, the way I got that was like I'm looking for the sort of the projection of x prime onto the x axis. So it's sort of this piece here. That's x cosine theta. And then I want to, I want the projection. onto the y-axis, which is this piece here, and that's y sine theta. Everybody know when I when I everybody know what I mean when I say projection? Right. I always think about it like a like an overhead projector, right? So if I were to this guy to come on. Yeah, I mean, you guys probably, so you can see this. So I have a light, right? The, the projection of that, you know, the, the projection of my hand onto this plane. Right? The, so that's why I use that word in there. So if you I always think about, like, when I'm thinking of projections in terms of mathematics, I sort of always think about if I had a light shining. If I had a light shining straight down on the x-axis, what would the projection of x prime be? What would the shadow of x prime be? Right? If I had a light shining straight onto the y-axis, you know, perpendicular to the y-axis, what would the shadow be? You guys are smarter than me, so you probably don't have to think of little tools to remember. So, um, so then y prime, what is y prime in terms of x and y? Well, remember there's like a negative x-axis over here. This is still x, right? It's just in the negative direction. So that would be, the projection would be this guy, right? So that's minus x sine. Minus x sine theta plus 
y goes on there. So then, if I just write that in matrix form, x prime, y prime is equal to cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, cosine theta times x and y. And this is Q. So back to this little equation here. Any, any vector in the original coordinate system, x and y. So any, any vector I might draw in the original coordinate system, v, transforms into the prime coordinate system, v prime, via q. So this happens a lot. You know, I have a vector. We're, we're, as modelers, we can choose whatever coordinate system we want, right? We often choose one that's sort of uh, the inertial system, right, which is sort of we, we define it with respect to the Earth somehow, right? Maybe with, you know, uh, with respect to how you're standing in the room, you define, well, that's, you know, 10 feet to my right. I mean, you, you've essentially defined a coordinate system, right? Because it's respect to, to you, and you're like the inertial frame. Right? So as modelers, we can, we can draw a coordinate frame anywhere we want in any orientation we want. And then we can define vectors in it, in that coordinate frame, right? But a different modeler might have a different co coordinate frame. And it's really not just sort of a difference of opinion that matters. It's that usually there's a more... There's an easy, you know, depending on exactly what you're doing, there's an easier coordinate frame to use. Okay, and that's in fact how we'll use these transformations later. We'll see that, you know, um, in, in a sort of in a geologic sense, the most natural coordinate system to use are the coordinate are the the cardinal axes, right? So we sort of have a coordinate system that one vector is pointed down into the Earth, and the other two are aligned with north and east. That, that gives us an orthogonal. That gives us three, three vectors that we can define a coordinate system. Like. But if we're interested in, say, what's happening on one edge of the wellbore, we we might prefer a different coordinate system. Right? And are we can have wells that are horizontal and, or you know, vertical but deviated. And and so, you know, it makes more sense then to work in a coordinate system that's in the wellbore. And in fact. Even then, that coordinate system can be in polar coordinates, right? It's, you know, we're talking about something circular. It's more convenient to use a polar coordinate system. So to understand the, the transformations between coordinate systems can help us set, you know, we, we, we can, uh, and, and what I'm trying to say here is, you know, those principal directions of stress, we, we usually define with respect to the, the geographic coordinate system, north, east, and down. Uh, but in the wellbore, if the well, you know, if the sides of the wellbore are going to, you know, fail, if, if the stress is going to exceed the strength of the rock, and it's going to fail in that region, it's easiest to do those calculations in the wellbore coordinate frame. But we've defined stress in the geologic frame, and so we have to do a series of transformations to sort of get into the, you know, from the geologic frame into the wellbore, so that we can know if the rock's going to fail or not. Okay. And so that's that's what we're going to use these coordinate transformations for, and the you know the most basic is the vector transformation. So a vector in one frame transfers into a vector in another frame through this matrix. Okay. <coughs> there it is. And a matrix trans transforms like this. So we've already seen this equation. Yeah. Uh, are these vectors both orthogonal? Yeah, they, they'll always be orthogonal. Yeah. Yeah. So matrices transform like this. 
we've already seen this equation in the context where Q was a vector of eigen, uh, eigen vectors. Matrices transfer from one coordinate system to the other like this. I mean, Q could be any orthogonal set. It doesn't necessarily need to be the eigenvectors, okay? However, if, if you know, we've seen this, if Q is chosen so that its columns are eigenvectors, then S prime will be diagonal. So this is that special coordinate system that makes S diagonal. probably seen this before maybe in, in the context of permeability, right? Permeability is a full tensor, right? In three dimensions, it's a full tensor. It's symmetric, but, you know, there's more than, in general, there could be six unique values for permeability. But if we choose, we can rotate the coordinate system in some way that it'll diagonalize, and there'll only be three unique values. Okay, so that's all the linear algebra we need to know in this class. Most of it from here on out, you're going to use a computer for. Um, but you should know the underlying operations. You should be able to, you know, at least solve for the eigenvalues of two by two matrix by hand probably going to show up on a test. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors. 